Hi friends! Welcome to the fourth episode of the Awakening 3D Models. In the last episode, we worked on bone connections, learned about bone roll, and talked about its importance. We also got to know the different types of bones. I'm so happy you're here with me in this episode. Let's continue with the Luxo JR rigging. Before we start, don't forget you can download the practice file for this episode completely free from our pages on ArtStation and Gumroad. Okay, now it's time to look at the type of movement and create commands that will make the character move the way it should. In the first episode, we fully explored the character's movement. If you don't remember it well, I recommend watching the first episode again from minute 9 onward. Let's get started. I press 3 and go to the side view. Keep in mind that this part of the work should be done in pose mode. So, let's start from the bottom again. The base is responsible for moving the entire character, and as you can see, it does this well. By rotating the linkage, the whole top part of the character should rotate as well. I press R and test it. As you can see, it rotates well around the local X and Y axes. Pay attention, around the local X and Y axes, not the global X and Y axes. This is because the bones of the character move based on their own local axes. If I set the transform mode to global, we see that when rotating around the Z axis, the character rotates correctly. But if we look at the transform window, we can see that the rotation is applied to the Y axis. This data is more important because the animator will use it for animation. So, it's better to set the transform mode to local, so we can see everything as the animator will see it. Now, above the linkage, we have two bone paths that meet at this point. This means that the movement of one will affect the other, but as we can see, they are currently moving separately. To solve this problem, we use a feature called Constraint. A constraint in Blender is a tool that lets you control the behavior of objects, bones, or rigs by limiting their movement, rotation, or scaling. Constraints automate interactions between elements, making it easier to achieve specific effects or behaviors in your rig. In Blender, there are two types of constraints, object constraints and bone constraints, which you can access from these two tabs. Right now, we only need the bone constraint. If we click on Add Bone Constraint, we will see several options, each implementing specific commands. The constraint we need, which will be used in this character, is called Inverse Kinematics, or IK for short. Inverse Kinematics is a rigging method used to control the position and rotation of bones in a chain. With IK, you manipulate the target bone, and Blender calculates how the other bones in the chain should move to achieve the desired position. This is particularly useful for animating limbs, as it allows for more natural and intuitive control. So in the first step, we want to make it so that when we move the top sidearm, the sidearm and fork block move with it. To do this, we select the top sidearm and apply Inverse Kinematics in the Bone Constraints section. We change the name to IK Top Sidearm. As you can see, it gives us several settings. We have a target, which should be of type object, and if we click here, it shows us selectable options. The object we are working with is the Luxo Rig. Using this dropper, we can also pick the object from the scene. Just click on one of the bones to select the Luxo Rig. Yeah, another option has been added. The Bone option asks us to choose a bone that will control our IK. So, which bone should we choose? Obviously, our IK should be controlled from this point, but we don't have a controlling bone here. What we need to do is go into Edit Mode and create a bone at this point. I press Tab, go into Edit Mode, click here, and use E to create a bone along the Y axis with F2, naming it CTRL Top Sidearm. One thing to note here is that this newly created controller should not be a child of the top sidearm. So, we select it, press Alt-P, and choose Clear Parent to separate them. I press Tab and go back to Pose Mode, select the top sidearm, and in the Bone Constraints section, we assign CTRL, top sidearm, as its control. I also change the color of the new bone to blue in the Bone Properties, so it matches the others in Pose Mode. What do you think about choosing a different color, to make it stand out from the rest? Great! Now, I want to test our IK and see the result. I select the controller and move it with G. See, this is not the movement we were looking for, but don't worry, select the top sidearm, and in the IK settings, there's an option to fix this issue. Chain length. In this section, we can define how far along the bone chain the IK will affect. If this number is set to zero, as shown by the dashed line here, it will connect to the beginning of the chain. So, when we move the controller, the entire character moves with it. I want the top sidearm, sidearm, and fork block to be affected. 
We just need to change this number to 3, and now we see that the dashed line has moved from this part to this part. Let's see the result in action. When I select the controller and move it with G, we can see that these bones are wonderfully affected. It can't get better than this. It's really exciting when we get closer to the final result. Now, let's move on to the elbow. The elbow, just like the top side arm, will affect its previous bone when it moves. So, for the elbow, we also create an inverse kinematics constraint from the bone constraints section and name it IK elbow. We select the Luxo rig as the target using the dropper. For the bone, we can use the top side arm since it's right here and isn't a parent or child of the elbow. This will make the elbow move when the top side arm moves, exactly what we want. So, I select top side arm from the list here. We want both the elbow and back arm to be affected. So we enter the number 2 here. Let's see what happens. I select the top side arm controller and see that when I move it, the elbow and back arm move beautifully. Notice that during their movement, the bridle and top back arm don't move correctly. This problem can be easily solved. We just need to create an IK for the bridle as well. We select the bridle and apply inverse kinematics to it. We name it IK Bridle. We select the Luxo rig as the target. And for the bone, what should we do? We can use top sidearm controller, so I select top sidearm controller from this window. If I select and move top sidearm controller, we see that the bones interact perfectly and follow each other. As you can see, all the IKs we created are now controlled by this controller. So I press F2 and rename it to IKCTRL. It's better. Great. Now let's test our rig. If I grab the base and move it, we see that, contrary to what we expected, not all the bones move correctly. This is because this controller isn't following the base. To fix this, we need to make the controller a child of the base. So I go into edit mode, select the controller, and while holding shift, select the base. I press control P and choose keep offset. I go back to pose mode, select the base, and move it. Now we see that everything follows the base correctly. I also check the rotation, and we see that it rotates correctly along all axes. Let's go to the linkage. The linkage isn't supposed to move, it's only supposed to rotate according to our plan. So, I press R and test the rotation. Why did this happen? Any idea what's causing this problem? It's all because of the controller. Since we made the controller a child of the base, it only follows the base. We just need to make it a child of the linkage, and now it will follow both the linkage and the base, since the linkage is a child of the base. So, I go into edit mode, select the controller, and while holding shift, select the linkage. I press control P and choose keep offset. I go back to pose mode, select the linkage, and rotate it around its axis with R. Now we see that everything follows it correctly. The linkage tail is on a pin, and we know that the top part of the character should rotate around the x-axis with this pin. How can we make this happen? Right now, if we want to rotate the top part of the character around the x-axis, the only way is to rotate the linkage. As you can see, rotating it doesn't work correctly. What should we do to make the rotation happen from this point? We just need to go into edit mode and add a new bone at this point. I select the linkage and create a bone along the z-axis with E. I press F2 and name it Top Linkage. While holding Shift, I select IK Controller, Fork Block, Back Arm, and finally Top Linkage, and press Control P, then Keep Offset. Hmm. What do you think if we just delete the linkage? Because this new bone we created rotates the top part both around the X and Y axes. I select the linkage, press X, and delete the bone. I also rename this to Linkage. We should always try to optimize our rig as much as possible. Now let's go into pose mode and test it. No problem, just check the transform of each one, and if it's changed, set it back to zero. Now everything is in order. Let's check again from the bottom. The base is controlling all the bones correctly. The linkage is rotating the character correctly around the X and Y axes. I also select the IK controller to make sure everything is working great. Excellent! Now, let's go into edit mode and select each bone to make sure the roll data is set to zero. We'll continue until all the bones are set to zero.
This step is necessary to prevent inaccurate bone movement and rotation. Now, I reset this, and you can see that the roll has changed and looks correct. It's best that the Z axis of this controller is aligned with the base, to avoid problems for the animator. We'll do the same here, resetting it to zero for the same reason. Great, now everything is ready for the next step. The next step is to add a pole target. A pole target is used in an IK setup to control the direction or bend of a bone chain. For example, in a character rig, a pole target can make sure the elbow or knee bends the right way. It's usually a separate object or bone that controls the IK chain's rotation. Let's do it. First, I'm going to hide the mesh here temporarily so we can see what's happening better. To create a pole target, I'm going to extrude a new bone along the Y axis from this point. I select it, press Alt P, and choose Clear Parent. Then, I move it to this position. Press F2 and name it Pole Target. I go to Pose Mode, select the elbow, and in the Bone Constraints, in the IK Elbow Settings, we can see the Pole Target option. This option is also an object type. I use the eyedropper tool to select the object and link the Pole Target to it in the Bone Settings. Let's see what changes. To fix this issue, I just need to change the pole angle to negative 90. Usually, setting it to either plus 90 or negative 90 fixes the problem. When I move the pole target, I see it doesn't fully affect the object. I just need to link this pole target to the IK top sidearm as well. Luxo rig. Pole target. Set it to negative 90 here. Let's test it. Great! It works correctly. I also change its color to orange in the bone settings. Our work in this step isn't done yet. If I move the IK controller, I see it works correctly, as long as it doesn't go too low. And if I move the pole target a bit lower, it will work. To fix this, I need to find a way to keep the pole target in the right position when the character's skeleton changes. For this, I can use a constraint called Copy Transforms to set it up. The Copy Transforms constraint makes one object or bone copy the exact location, rotation, and scale of another. It's useful to make sure different parts of a rig align correctly or to sync the motion of bones or objects. Let's do the same thing here. We'll place one bone here, one here, and one in the middle of these two. Finally, we'll make the pole target a child of the middle bone. Great. Now, let's go to edit mode. From here, we create a bone pointing down. Press E, and then Z, and done. Now I'll duplicate it and snap it to the base. To snap it, select this part, press Shift S, and choose Cursor to Selected. Then, select this, and press Shift S, and choose Selected to Cursor. Now I'll duplicate it again and move it roughly here. After applying Copy Transforms, it will be in the right position. Let's name this one Top PT Controller. Name this one Mid PT Controller. And this one Bottom PT Controller. We want the middle bone to always be between the other two bones. So, let's go to Pose Mode. Select it, and in the Bone Constraints, create a Copy Transforms Constraint. Select Luxo Rig as the target. Then, select Top PT Controller as the bone. As expected, it snaps to it immediately. Now, I'll duplicate this constraint. And in the bone section, select bottom PT controller. See? Now it's attached to the bottom bone. Since constraints are applied from bottom to top, the one lower down takes priority. We just need to set the influence to 0.5. This means it will allow the top constraint to work at 50%. Let's name this Top PT controller copy transforms. And this one, bottom PT controller copy transforms. Great. Now, if I grab the IK controller and move it, I see they all move together, but it's not exactly what we wanted. This is because, since I extruded from here and duplicated it, they're all children of top side arm and follow it. Let's go to edit mode. Select all three while holding shift, 
and then choose Linkage. Press Ctrl-P and choose Keep Offset. Let's check by going to Pose Mode and moving the IK controller again. Now, we see nothing happens because they are all children of Linkage and follow it. We need to make sure that when we move IK controller, top PT controller moves with it. To solve this, let's use another constraint. Select top PT controller and add a copy location constraint. First, select Luxo rig, then IK controller as the bone. Now, when we move IK controller, we get the result we wanted. But it seems we forgot to change the chain length to 2 in the IK bridle settings. This is because when I move the controller, the base also gets affected. So I'll select bridle and change the chain length to 2 in the IK settings. Let's go to edit mode and make pole target a child of mid PT controller so it follows it. Now, let's go back to pose mode to test. As expected, the pole target moves correctly, but in some situations, like this one, our rig breaks because the pole target isn't positioned correctly relative to the IK. We need to make sure that when we move the IK, the pole target keeps its angle with the IK. To fix this, let's use a new constraint for mid PT controller. I'll select mid PT controller and find the damped track constraint. The damped track constraint makes an object or bone face a target while keeping smooth and natural movement. So here, I'll set Luxo rig as the target and bottom PT controller as the bone. As you can see, this makes the Y axis of mid PT controller always point to bottom PT controller. Naturally, the pole target, which is a child of mid PT controller, follows it and rotates around mid PT controller based on its rotation. Great. We can see that the pole target problem is beautifully solved, and we've overcome the challenges one by one. Also, as the last point in this episode, to reset the pole target and IK to their original positions, you can use Alt-G. Let's wrap up here. After watching the video, make sure to try out what we've covered today. Remember, learning stays in your mind only through practice. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in the next episode as we continue this journey together.